You gonna try again? Whoever owns this must be doing all right. Hey, he's not a copper, that's for sure. Doesn't look like they're in. Yeah, uh, maybe. Let's try in the back. Geez, I tell you what, it's not a bad little place for a weekender, is it? Yeah, I wouldn't mind something like this for the rest of the week. Mate, I don't reckon that mutt would let you anywhere near it. Nice car. Yeah, not in your wages, mate. G'day. Anything I can do for you? Uh, you Mr Scott James? Yeah, that's me. I think <laughs> I'm a bit hungover from last night. You know how it is. Yeah, I'm Senior Constable Schultz. This is uh, Constable Cooper. We're from Mount Thomas. Now, is Jonathan Wright of the MP staying here with you, sir? He was, yeah. Why? Uh, he left you a phone number as a contact point for the Airscape Flying School at... Uh... Bankstown. Yeah, Bankstown. Uh, it seems the uh, light aircraft... They've been trying to call you, but they could only get your answering machine. It seems the Beechcraft he hired hasn't been returned. It was due back at 7 this morning. And there's a bit of concern for his safety. All right. Bye-bye. PJ, mm -hmm. the Clark Electrics want to speak with someone. Seems a few power tools have been disappearing recently. They don't know whether it's shoplifting or what. Maybe some of the stuff have taken up home renovating, Maggie. Maybe. Yeah, well, wouldn't want a Jaguar like that. Well, it's dead easy, Adam. Yeah. In your next life, pick with your parents. Uh, don't forget, guys, money doesn't buy you know what. It doesn't buy poverty either. Oh, Patrick, if only you'd stop running around, mate, you'd find out there's more to life. You'd know. Hey, well, I reckon I might. Oh, maybe I'm a bit more choosy. <clears throat> That'd be a first, wouldn't it? Yeah, maybe I'm not the sort of bloke to get sucked into the grieving widow routine either. You listen to me. You leave Sasha out of it, all right? Schultz. Cooper. My office. So, what's the story? Well, we spoke to a Scott James at the contact number, and Jonathan Ryder did fly in for the weekend with three friends, two men and a woman. He uses the back paddock as an airstrip. You should see the place, boss. You got names and addresses? Yeah. What time did they leave? Well, James said he wasn't sure because he hit the Terps that night, so by the time they took off, he was well and truly out of it. So we don't know how many people were aboard? Well, just the four he thinks. They've all left anyway. So Scott James got a wife who can confirm any of this? Well, not this weekend, he hasn't. She's off visiting her folks. Boss, I've got a code 99. What's that? Oh, Adam, you should study your code, mate. Adam, it's a, it's a down plane. It's a down plane. You're right. Apparently, a Qantas jet picked up a distress signal. Air traffic control says it's riders four-seater. So it's out of our hands? Afraid not, boss. The signal is coming from the Goodyman National Park. Staying in Mount Thomas? Nobody tells me anything. Could be transferring me to Whoop Whoop for all I know. Oh, they wouldn't do that. I thought you were supposed to be fit. Oh, shut up. I'm just as fit as you are. So, what do you reckon the problem with the plane was? I don't know. Might have lost an engine. Well, I thought the plane had two engines. You got two legs, doesn't seem to make much difference. Been hanging out to go on one of these searches. Good on you. Try out my first aid, recess, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> you are joking, aren't you? What do you mean? Come on, Ed, say, you don't expect us to come across anything, do you? Why not? Mate, we're the second 11, the back blocks. It's the search and rescue glory boys. They'll have kept all the most likely areas to themselves. You reckon they'll find anyone alive? Oh, I doubt it. 
You think a little lightweight plane like that would just glide down, eh? Gliding's not the problem, mate. That's when it stops gliding. No, no, Ted, there's nothing yet. Well, we don't know who was on the plane. We've been given a few names, but nothing's been confirmed so far. Yeah, well, as soon as I hear anything. Yep. Sure. How can I help you? I hear Jonathan Ryder was piloting the plane, yeah? Friend of the family, eh? Oh, I'm sorry. Harriet Keppel from NTN. Sergeant Tom Croydon. So, what can I do for you? Oh, well, nothing much, Tom. I'm just after a bit of background material on the missing plane. Mind if I call you Tom? Well, uh, we'll have to be quick. As you can see, I'm pretty much on my own here today, Miss... Um, oh, friends call me Harry. Ah, uh, so this uh, search has stretched your resources, yeah? We're coping. Could you tell me the names of the passengers, Tom? The names will be released when we've located the plane. And can you confirm it was piloted by Jonathan Ryder? As I the... said, when the plane's been located. His wife said he flew down for the weekend with some friends. Really? Then she can tell you their names too. So he was aboard, yeah? I can't comment on that. I'll tell you how you can help me, Tom. Does Detective Hashem still work here? Friend of yours, is he? We've met. So have you taken up smoking or something? No. So how come you're so puffed? I'm not puffed. You sound puffed. Well, anybody would be after this, wouldn't they? Not anybody, no. You know what you should do? If this is something about taking a rest, I don't want to hear it. No, no, no. You should join a gym. Oh, great. Just what I need to hear about. Oh! No wonder they're so slow letting girls in, eh? Another remark like that and you'll be walking out of here on your own. And I can guarantee that no search party will ever find you, Wayne Patterson. I'll have to think about turning back soon. What for? We won't be caught out here in the dark. Is that the only reason? What do you mean? Oh, I just thought you might be seeing Sasha tonight. I might be. Hey, what's up between you and PJ? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing, Jim. For oh, Wayne. <laughs> come on, buddy. Hey, you gotta come on. Take it easy. Gotta get them away from the plane. Right, Take it easy. Come on. No, no, no. Leave. Come on. No. It it come on. Blow up any second. It's not gonna go up. It could go up. It's been down for hours. Right? It was, no, we just. Yes. 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 How long have I been out of it for? Look, you just sit down. We'll take care of it. Oh, okay. Now, listen, she's really cold. Yeah. Right. She needs a blanket to keep her warm, right? Her blanket's no good to her now. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, God. Okay, you see. Okay. If I hadn't. Got so bloody drunk last night. I could have done something. Yeah. I could have done something. Yeah. All right, now what's your name? It's Jonathan Ryder. All right, Jonathan, were you a pilot? Um, no, who? I was a passenger. Gary. Mm. Gary was a pilot. It's okay. Do you remember what happened? I can't remember what happened. Yeah, it's okay. Who's the young woman? Passenger Doyle. All right, you get on my goodness. Take a look at this. Wayne, there's five people. In the four-seater. No wonder they had trouble. All right, look, you stay here with her. Don't move her, though. She may have spinal injuries, OK? Mount Thomas, 850 to Green 900. Mount Thomas, 850 to Green 900. Come on. What's the trouble? I think my radio may have gone bung. Mount Thomas, 850 to Green 900. Damn it. Well, what are we going to do? It's going to be dark in half. OK. Mount Thomas, 850 to Green 900. All right, um, that's Gary, Gary Graham, David Eastbury, and this is Emma Stevens. Look, I think, can we get her out and make yeah, it comfortable? Don't touch her. We'll wait oh. for the paramedics. All right, all right. Okay. Yes. How's it going, Wayne? Well, I don't think our problem's electrical. I think it's the reception. If we could get to the top of the ridge, we might be right. Well, you better get going. It's going to take a couple of hours to walk up there. Why me? Sure, the fit one. All right, you got the names? Uh, yeah, just a sec. Mr. Ryder. Yes. 
Could I have the name of the young woman, please? Um, I don't know anything about her. Excuse me? I didn't even know she was on the plane. Yep, yep, as soon as I hear. See ya. Anyone on the plane? No, nothing. I had somebody asking after you before. Oh, yeah? She said you'd remember her. Harriet Keppel. Uh, you'd want to watch her boss, say good day, and end up in a column sounding like a come on. Friend of yours, is she? Uh, yeah, we've met. Hey, it's Burke and Wills. Burke and Wills didn't make it back. Where are Maggie and Wayne? Haven't you heard? Heard what? There's been no radio contact for hours. So, uh, what do you think caused the crash? The extra weight? I don't know. I, well, I suppose it wouldn't have helped. See, like I said, I was just... I was so out of it, I don't even remember getting out of the plane. I mean... Did you hear something? I thought I heard something. Did you hear it? Shouldn't be too much longer now. Come on, come on, come on. Okay. Once they get the message, the chopper will be here in no time. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope it doesn't hurt too much. Uh, it's all right, it's all right. You got a very light touch. It's all right, mate. It's all right. Don't move, don't move, Emma. Stay there. It's okay. Have you out of here real soon? She's gonna be all right. You know, it's, uh, it's amazing how people can survive. <laughs> they were my best friends. <laughs> I can't believe they've gone. <sighs> well, at, le at least uh, you both made it. But this is... It's, uh, it's like it's insane, you know, because... Like, last night we were, we were laughing and, and having a drink and... Well, hey, I suppose you see quite a bit of this. Yeah, quite a bit. Oh, this is crazy, I'm sorry. I know you, you did tell me your name, but, um, yeah, I forgot what it is. Maggie. Maggie. Oh, that's a nice name. Jono. Well, Jono, it's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <sighs> Not married? Oh, no. <laughs> well, Maggie, I reckon. Somewhere out there, there's a very special person waiting for you. I think there's plenty of time for that. That's what Gary thought. Because he and Emma were going to get married, you know? His divorce came through. This would not have happened if I had been flying this bloody plane. I've got more flying hours than he has. You know what it's like when you catch up with old mates. I was legless. The last thing I actually remember doing is taking a leak in the paddock. All right, and what time was this? Well, oh, it was the middle of the night, it was dark. And you're sure the other girl wasn't at the house? Well, I know I'd had a few, but I'm, I'm pretty sure to remember that. Any idea where she came from? Well, I'm trying to work that out myself. I mean, maybe... Gary put the plane down somewhere. Any idea where? Well, there's plenty of flat paddocks out there. Right, well, thanks for your help, Mr. Ryder. Yeah, sure. Look, if I think of anything else, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. 
What room is she in? Emma Stevens, did you say? Yeah, Emma Stevens. I'm her sister, Harriet. Mm, I don't think we've got an Emma Stevens. She was in the plane crash. Nice try, Harry, but you're miles off target. Go on, Harry, what are you up to? It's you're no ambulance chaser. It's nothing you'd be interested in. Well, not professionally, anyway. Well, then try me for the hell of it. Oh, if you must know, I was... <laughs> How many of these have I had? Either it's the Chardonnay or your charm, PJ. Mm. I was hoping for something on Jonathan Ryder. Mm, what? Oh, just things my viewers might be interested in. Such as? Oh, such as the fact that he's a player. <laughs> a player? He's a politician. What do you expect? Yeah, but he's always spouting off about family values and back to basics. All right, all right. So what has Emma Stevens got to do with this? Mm, more than most. She could, if pressed, describe any distinctive feature of the intimate parts of his anatomy. Mm -mm, mm -mm. He said she was a pilot's girlfriend. Oh, well, he would, wouldn't he? Oh, that's right. Love's old sweet song. <sighs> I said it was of no interest to you. Harry, anything you say would be of interest to me. <laughs> oh, PJ. Well, I think it's about that time of the night for confessions. Mm. And I have to say, you're my all-time favorite one-night stand. What are you talking about? It was a long weekend. Oh, it didn't seem that long to me. No, nor me. No. For once, surface was paradise. <laughs> yeah, well, it was the best seminar I've ever missed. So what's new? Is there a Mrs. PJ around the place? <laughs> nope. Only near misses. How about you? Oh, one direct hit. You heard of Mr. Wright, yeah? He wasn't. So you're still a little lost soul? We're two little lost souls. So you, uh... Um... The room tent next to the bathroom. Give me a few minutes. Good night. You see? Good night. Get a bottle of Chardonnay, thanks, mate. You hear anybody offering any uh, cheap power tools around here? Oh, you're the only power tool around here. Yeah. Okay. Nobody should tell him. Tell him what? She's trouble. I reckon next business is next business. Uh, Chris, you want to give us a couple of billiards, please? Sure. Uh, she's over Billy then. Short grieving process. Listen, mate, if you've got something you want to say to me, it'd be an idea if you plucked up a bit of courage and you just said it. She lied. You mean? She lied about her husband. She knew. He was getting the drugs, mate. You mean she was just being loyal? Well, you can put it that way. Hey. You knew about that at the time. You didn't tell me. Nick, it didn't matter at the time. Doesn't matter now, then, does it? There you go. Any more news on that plane crash? No. Oh, yes. Got any rooms available? Yes, yeah, I'll be with you in a minute. Thanks. Are you just passing through, eh? Not quite. Staying a few days, I think. Good. Good on you. Yep, no worries. Look, if Harriet says Emma Stevens is Ryder's girlfriend, she's Ryder's girlfriend. Well, I'd say she got it wrong. I don't believe he lied to me. He's a politician, Mags. Is what they do. All right, let's say PJ's information's right. It's not. If... Well, let's just say it is. If Ryder believes the plane's about to go up, why leave his girlfriend in order to save someone he doesn't know? That's right. Did he have to get this girl out first before he could get to the other one? Not that I could see. No, well, maybe he does know her. Then why deny it? Well, she just didn't seem the sort he'd know. You know she was more like a bikey with these home-done tats and, and letters on her fingers. What letters? Well, there was D-O-D-A on one and R-P-E-D on the other. What's that mean? Drop dead. Hi, oh, PJ. Time to have another word with friend Ryder. <laughs> Tom Croydon, Mud Thomas. Uh, uh, PJ? Yeah. What about next to Kim? Okay, thanks. Emma Stevens didn't make it. Oh, no. Complications after the operation. Be interesting to see Ryder's reaction. Kid gloves, PJ. Oh, God, not Emma, too. Jonathan, oh. I'm very sorry. We know you were close. No, not, not close. I only ever saw Emma with... Poor old Gary. Oh, 
Oh, I can't believe this. I can't believe it. Well, we know you were closer to Emma than the other girl. Uh, uh, no, I already told you. I didn't know the other girl. That's right. You I did was say just that. wondering why you pulled her from the wreck uh, before anyone else. Hang on. Excuse me. Now. Have you ever been in something like this? No, I haven't. Well, you've got no idea what you're doing, all right? You're out of it. If someone needs help, you help them. Of course you do. Excuse did. me, Constable. I just figure if you're going to save anyone, Mr Ryder, you'd save your girlfriend. She was Gary's girlfriend. Did I say yours? I'm sorry. Excuse me, Mr Ryder. Your wife's here. Oh, yes. Uh, thanks. I sent her in. The police have finished. For now. I said, Maggie. I didn't thank you properly for what you did last night. It's all part of the job. No. It was above and beyond you. You were wonderful, and I thank you. Hello, darling. Been in the wars. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Gary and Dave, <laughs> Emma, and John, of course. Just a friendly get together. <laughs> We've known each other since school. <laughs> it's hard to believe I'll never see him again. This isn't easy, I know, but we have to clear this up. Can you tell me what happened that night? Sure. Um. I stayed home and got dinner with Emma. The other three went to the pub for some grog. No, there were four of them. Four? Are you sure it wasn't three, Chrissy? Yeah. They were noisy, you know, laughing and joking, and I remember looking across at them. Hi, Chris. Any chance for coffee upstairs? Well, I don't do room service, but I could get you one down here if you Thanks. like. Thanks. That'd be great. Uh, Mrs. Ryder? Yes. Senior Detective Hashem. Have a word? Yeah. Weren't you at the hospital? Yeah, that's right. Well, I don't see how I can help you. No, I'm just trying to identify the passengers on the plane. Well, you'd have to talk to my husband about that. But I take it they were just three old school chums? Yeah, that's right. And the two young girls? They were chums as well? I know you're just trying to do your job, Mr Hashem. That's right. But you should really try not to be so offensive. PJ? Yeah, what's... That was the CIA. They've done a preliminary check. Seems that plane was out of fuel. Was there a leak or something? No. Nah. Which means it took off on virtually an empty tank. <sighs> the pilot must have been off his head. Maybe he was. There was also a tote bag with some party drugs. Well, could explain what the girl was doing. The only drugs do link up the most unlikely people. Mm. And if she was dealing, she must have already made the drop because what was there was only enough for personal use. You reckon Scott James could be sitting on something? Why don't you go and have a look around? What is it? I reckon we've struck oil. Come on. I think you should know I find all this totally offensive. You got the keys for this? They're in it. You can trust people around here. Look. I told you, you won't find any drugs. We're not criminals. I'm not used to having my work out. Look, isn't it enough I've just lost several of my close friends without being subjected to this? Hey, PJ. According to this, the girl is Judy Tanner. Of Elm Street and David's. Yeah. You're saying you don't know her? Well, I don't know anyone like that. So how do you explain her purse in your car? Look, I told you. The others used it to go to the pub. Maybe they gave her a lift or something. She must have left it behind. We have a witness that puts you there. What? You were seen drinking with your friends. Listen, I'm no criminal. And I know I object to this... this third degree. Your superiors will hear about this. See you later. Afternoon, Inspector. I see you, Sergeant. Yeah. 
what are you saying, Ted? I'm not saying anything. It's not coming from me. It's coming from upstairs. You do realise there are a couple of very big question marks over this crash? They're not a couple of career criminals, Tom. They're highly respected members of society. Why can't you accept what they say? Because it's not acceptable. The only survivor reckons he was so drunk he can't tell us what happened and his mate on the ground suffers from selective amnesia. Something is going on with these Tom, parts. Tom, and... for your own sake, go easy. What do you mean for my own sake? Just go easy. So, what was she doing on the plane? Beats me. Tell you what I think. They probably... Get those figures as soon as you can, Tom. Yes, of course. I reckon they thought they could make it with five on board if they only carried minimum fuel. Yeah, but Adam, why take her with them in the first place? Well, you know what it's like when you've had a few drinks. They probably thought it was a good idea at the time. Oh, well, maybe she wanted to join the Mile High Club. I thought this bloke was supposed to be pushing family values. Oh, mate, they're the worst sort, you know that? You don't know that. Oh, I'd appreciate it if you'd all keep your comments to yourselves. What have we got? Nobody home at Judy Tanner's place, but a neighbour says she lives there with a truckie. Seems they had a fight on Saturday night. The neighbour could hear it through the walls. Anyway, she says Judy just took off. Did she say where? No idea. Look at the truckie. Right now he's on the road somewhere, but the neighbour did give us his rego. Ken Spriggs, his name is. Good, we get TOG onto it. Right now I need somebody to bring in Jonathan Ryder. It'll need tact. Well, send Maggie, boss. She's a big fan of his. Look, I, I just want to say, first up, that I, I feel kind of responsible for what happened out there. How's that? Look, if I hadn't been so out of it, I, I would never, never have allowed that plane to take off so overloaded. Well, what do you think your friend Gary did? I honestly don't know. You know, he drained a considerable amount of fuel to reduce the plane's weight. Did he? He must have been very determined to take that girl with him. Why? Well, I can't think why. She wasn't exactly his style, you know. According to Constable Doyle, you said you didn't know her. Why well, don't? So how did she come to be with you? Well, as I explained to your uh, detective, I don't remember. <laughs> According to Mr James, your friends picked her up hitching and invited her back for a drink. Well, well, yeah, maybe they did. Look, I, I'm sorry. I, I just don't remember. I was so drunk. Look, all I wanted was a, a quiet night with, with some old mates. That's all. Why do you think she got on the plane? Who can say? Well, why would Gary, a supposedly experienced pilot, take the risk? I honestly, I, I don't know. And I guess we'll never know. Look, if there's nothing else, I, I'm kind of bushed, so... I'm not surprised. When are you leaving? Uh, well, can get another night tonight and head off first in tomorrow. Very wise. Good luck. Thanks for your help. Have you seen him before? Yeah, he's been in a few times. If he makes too much of a nuisance of himself, he's out. Jesus and all. No, he'll never get anything on Jonathan Ryder. Not with his connections. Well, what's to get? You tell me. There's nothing to tell. Oh, come on. What's the story? There's no story, Harry. Oh, come on. You wouldn't hold anything back from me, would you? I'll be gone tomorrow. This is our last chance for a little chat. So what are we wasting on Ryder for? Oh, is this going to be a reprise of last night? On one condition. Mm -hmm. You let me stay until the morning. <laughs> I've got to get a little sleep sometime. Fine, so you can get it with me. <laughs> first. Uh, uh, no, no thanks, mate. I don't think I want to be safe tonight. Uh, uh, listen, um, you're not in the market for a uh, power drill, are you? I can do one for you, did she? Um, you see that guy over at the bar? Yeah. Have a word with him. Right, eh? Thanks. Good. G'day. The bloke over there reckons you're in the market for a power tool. Still in the box. Delivered to your door. What have you got? Fine, I want you to go over to Clark Electrics. 
because some people are too busy with their love lives. Pick up a bloke called Terry Watson. He's in the dispatch department. Apparently our young friend in there takes the orders and Watson posts them out. Not the best advertisement for the born again. Uh, boss, that was the CIA. They'll be forwarding the complete report tomorrow. The passenger side of the plane was a write-off. The pilot side was okay. Yeah, the pilot was killed. Hmm. Where was Ryder sitting? Front passenger seat. Sounds like somebody was wearing a St. Christopher. I don't reckon. Got a message you were looking for me? Sorry? Ken Spriggs. It was something about my girlfriend, Judy. Judy Tanner. Well, you know where she is? Well, we've been together about a year now. And, um... You know, it wasn't perfect, but we had our moments. We heard there was a bit of an argument last Saturday night. Yeah, I can guess where he got that from. Nosy bitch next door. Do you know where Judy went? Nah, after she slammed out of there, that was the last I saw her of her. Oh, God, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's all right. When you're up to talking, we'll talk. I'm, I'm OK. I'm OK. Do you mind telling me what the argument was about? Oh, it's, uh, it's private. Sergeant, a word, please. Excuse me. What is it? They've just faxed through the autopsy report. Judy Tanner was already dead when the plane crashed, boss. According to the autopsy, she was about ten weeks pregnant. Yeah, that, that was what the row was about. She wouldn't have an abortion. Trust me to tie up with a Catholic, eh? Look, I'm paying off my rig. I can't afford a family yet. Besides, I had to put up with her throwing up every morning. Yes, the report says there were traces of an anti nausea drug. Yeah, yeah, she'd been a lot better since she got something from the doctor. She'd also been taking amphetamines. Amphetamines? Speed. And there are amphetamines and barbiturates in her tote bag. Was she a dealer? <laughs> no, no way. So where did she get them? How do I know? Uppers and downers are the sort of things that truckies use. Oh, not me, mate. Oh, not me. So if we were to come back to your place, we wouldn't find anything. Look, how am I going to pay off the rig if I don't keep going? She, she must have helped herself to my drawer or something. What I want to know is, is what the hell was she doing on a plane? I'm as shocked as you are. You had no idea she was dead. Of course not. When your people found us, I was trying to save her. So how did she get on the plane? She obviously didn't walk on. As I have said, I can't remember. Yeah, that's right. You were legless. Well, does that surprise well, you? Well, it just seems odd that the two people that can help us were both out of it. Oh, what's so odd about that? You must know what it's like when you meet up with mates from the old school, right? You haven't asked us how she died. All right. How did she die? She OD'd. A lethal little cocktail of booze, drugs and medication. You're not suggesting there were drugs at the house? No, I'm not suggesting anything. Well, I certainly hope not. My position on drugs is public record. Well, who knows what she took before she came to the house? Did you have intercourse with her? What? Did you have intercourse with her? What kind of a well, question is that? Let me put it that? this way. Did you sleep with her? What did you do? You know my position vis-a-vis -vis family values. Somebody had intercourse with her that night. Well, who knows where she was before we saw her. Mr Ryder, you were on a plane with a dead girl who'd been drinking, popping pills and having sex. Now, how does that stack up vis-a-vis -vis family values? I know nothing about it. 
Well, you should tell that to the media. If anyone, if anyone even hints at such a thing, I will sue them from here to kingdom come. I have to tell you, blokes, the whole thing's a bit of a blur. You were sober enough when you got back from the pub. More or less. Well, you said you had a meal. I was nodding off towards the end of it. Did the girl leave the room with anybody any time? No. Nah. Well, you seem pretty sure for somebody who was out of it. As far as I know. I should tell you that there was uh, semen in her body. What? At the time of her death, she'd just had intercourse. It wasn't me. Who was it? Well, how would I know? I was asleep. Well, you... Hope you're not saying I'm lying. Well, you wouldn't want to find a dead body, would you? I, mean... I warn you. Would you like to tell me who came up with this harebrain scheme? Was it you or your friend in there? I don't know what you're talking about. Something else you don't know. Guess who he pulled from the wreck first? Not his girlfriend, Emma, who was still alive. Not his girlfriend. Not his girlfriend, Emma, who was still alive. But a girl he knew was already dead. What? That's right. His girlfriend's lying there, broken and bleeding. And all your mate can think of is how to cover himself. Emma was a good friend of yours, wasn't she? Now, is there anything you'd like to tell us? Look, that's all crap. And I'll warn you about repeating it outside of this room. Somebody had sex with that girl. Now, well, what about... Well, what's his name? David. Wasn't he the one? Wasn't he the one who wanted to get onto her? Yeah. Picked her up? You told me Gary was the one who wanted to pick her up. So now Dave's the most likely candidate, would you say? Yeah, that's right. He's the one. Well, if that's all... Now, hang on. There were other traces of semen. What? She had sex with two men that night. Now, with, if Gary was with Emma, that leaves you and Mr Ryder and, well, he's in the family values. It wasn't me. You're saying it was him? I'm saying it wasn't me and you can't prove otherwise. <sighs> Look, I understand. You're full, she's full. Take her to bed, she passes out. It's not your fault if she carks it. No, it wasn't. I was asleep. I told you. Look, I've got nothing to hide. What about your relationship with Emma Stevens? Do you want that all over the front pages? Well, I think that you should maybe consider your position, Sergeant. You obviously considered yours. A dead girl on your hands would be very embarrassing for you and all your friends. But you particularly had built a career promoting family values. I know nothing about that girl. Maybe not. But you knew if the story got out, you'd be crucified. What? Mr. Family Values, a drunken weekend, young girl dies, you're there with your lover. Oh, you'd be finished. So you're all very keen for it not to become public. So keen that you put the body aboard a plane with the idea of dropping it in the bush and hoping to God it would never be found. You were too out of it. And you drained off more fuel than you knew. Do you know what the Civil Aviation Authority report says, Mr Ryder? It says that the passenger side of the plane was wrecked. The pilot side was intact. So? So? How come the pilot dies and the passenger lives? Well, I guess these things just kind of happen. I'll tell you what happened, Mr Ryder. You were flying that plane. When you came round after the crash, you realised you were in more trouble than ever. So, you came up with the idea of putting your friend Gary into the pilot seat, but you still had a problem. How do you explain away the dead girl? The answer was to drag her into the bush, but before you got very far, the rescue team arrived. So you came up with that ridiculous story of trying to save her life. Well, that's fascinating. Prove it. 
Mm. One more wedding. Cheers, mate. Ta. Oh, you look happy. <sighs> You'd look happy in my shoes. Oh, uh, Mrs. Ryder. Yes. Now, this is off the record. But don't you care what your husband gets up to? Look, my kids and I have a wonderful life. And I'll do everything I can to go on having a wonderful life. Nothing is going to upset that. Mm-hmm. You see? So, what's the story? Oh, seems the network talked to my producer, and the word from above is they're canning my piece on Jonathan Ryder. Mm, yeah, we can't touch him either. Uh, I told you, nobody can touch those guys. Nobody. Well, it's lucky Mr. Spriggs doesn't know the full story. I reckon he'd tear Ryder apart. Oh, Stop, you it! Bastard! Stop, Stop it! Stop it! Come on. Ryder, oh, Easy, easy. Come here. Hey, now, you sit down there. Thank you. You okay? What do you think? I don't even know who that guy is. Well, whoever he is, you don't have his vote, matey. I want him charged. I want him put away. I'll be fine when that idiot's behind bars. You're not pressing charges. Of course, I'm going to press charges. You're not. That was Ken Spriggs. What? Yeah. He won't be pressing charges, Mr. Hashem. No, I won't be pressing charges, all right? This is a story I can cover. But the question remains, what was Jonathan Ryder's association with the dead girl? If Ryder pressed charges, the whole story would have come out. He's too smart for that. No, his wife's too smart. Would have charged Spriggs, but it would have been a waste of time. Oh, you're right there. It would never have been allowed to come to court. At least Harry got part of the story out. Inspector Faulkner, it's got to be in the hot seat now, eh? Oh, oh poor old Ted. Well, being the senior officer here at the time, he's going to have to cop all the flack from upstairs. By the way, how did Ken Spriggs find out that Ryder was involved? Yeah, I wondered about that too. Bye, you bet. 